Hey everyone and welcome to another Armoured Warfare video. I've done one of these in a little bit. We've just concluded the first part of the Flashpoint 1 mission series as part of the Black Sea Season 1. We're going to be looking at the vehicle that was won by the top 10 players in the event, and that is the brand new Chinese Premium Tier 9 light tank, the VT-5. Apologies for how long it's taken to get this video out. I've been in Canada, I've been ill since I came back, so it's taken a little bit just to get this video out to you. The VT-5 though is a light tank designed for the export market in China, mainly looking at replacing the main export of the Chinese vehicles, Type 62 and Type 63 tanks. Both of those are exported to a lot of like Asian and African countries as an affordable light vehicle. The VT-5 was supposed to be the latest in this sort of series of export vehicles, thing about it is though, currently there have been no orders for this new generation of light tank. In Armored Warfare though, it's in the game as a tier 9 premium light tank and it is very, very exclusive. The light tanks are really all about fire support, taking advantage of armored fighting vehicle spotting and using its decent camo to fire while concealed. But with such a high rate of fire that it can put out a very large amount of damage per second. The VT-5 is no exception to that either. It's armed with a 105mm rifled gun, firing either APFSDS, the uh, armor piercing, heat, high explosive anti tank, or um, anti tank guided missiles, at a rate of fire of one round every 4.11 seconds with my build. And it's got uh, 620mm of penetration with those APFSDS rounds, or 775 with the anti tank guided missiles. Personally, I'm running all AP rounds in this because, well, the amount of APS systems that uh, are in the game at this tier, cage armor, ERA, you've got so much of that mounted on the high tier vehicles. Honestly, the AP was by far the most reliable round to use, especially with the APS changes that are coming to the game soon. The gun is also the most accurate out of all the tier 9 and uh, 10 light tanks, which is pretty important because the penetration of 620 is actually the worst out of those tier 9 and 10 light tanks, mainly because it's got the smallest gun, it's got 105mm compared to all of the others which get 120mm. So it loses penetration, it loses damage, but makes up for it with a slightly faster fire rate and better accuracy. Don't get me wrong, it's a decent gun, it just doesn't have the punch of something like the Thunderbolt 2, which is also a tier 9 progression light tank, but it also only has marginally longer reload, it doesn't have much worse accuracy, but it's got a lot better penetration and better damage per shot. In terms of armor though, it's one of the more heavily armored light tanks, not only boasting explosive reactive armor over a large portion of the vehicle, but a whole bunch of cage around the rear of the vehicle and most of the turret as well, meaning that missiles and high explosive anti-tank rounds are going to have problems getting through. Thing is though, realistically, it's a light tank. You should get some odd bounces, especially on the turret, which is by far its most heavily armoured part. As you see in the footage though, just don't rely on the armour whatsoever. You make one mistake and a large portion of your hit points are going to go away pretty quickly. What you can rely on though is manoeuvrability. This camo is worse than similar vehicles of its tier because it is larger, so you are going to have to rely on being more mobile than the others and let that do the talking. Top speed of 70 km an hour is the same as the Thunderbolt 2 in the WPB Anders, however it's nearly a second quicker to 32 km an hour than the Anders, and 0.2 seconds faster than the Thunderbolt. It's also lighter than those two, and while it doesn't turn quite as quickly as the Thunderbolt, it is still pretty respectable. But you know what, I've talked about the stats of the vehicle enough quite frankly, how does it play and do I think it's a good vehicle? Honestly, I think it's a decent little machine. It zips around the battlefield, popping up in spots where you don't expect it. In lower population PvP matches, it does decently when it can get a flank in and put a round out every 4 seconds into the, the lower armoured sides and rear of just about anything it comes up against. The lower penetration on the rounds doesn't show up quite as much as that. Since right now, most matches do have lower numbers and room to manoeuvre, it works especially well on things like global operations. Full matches are 15 versus 15, while they don't happen that often, um, but you don't have the room to manoeuvre, the lower alpha and lower penetration are going to be noticeable on some of the heavier armoured vehicles. In PvE though, I've had a huge amount of fun in it. It's a really solid little vehicle and a lot of fun to play. Flying around the map at top speed, putting the accuracy of that 105mm gun to work. As a, fire, as a fire support vehicle, letting either the AFVs or the main battle tanks do the spotting, and then pumping shot after shot into the targets that pop up. 
the, the amount of lightly armored vehicles that you come across in PvE, things like the Bradley, the lack of penetration isn't too much of an issue. And those that are more heavily armored things just like to show you their ass often enough where it's not going to be that much of a problem either. But even if they don't, the accuracy of the gun means hitting weak spots is going to be pretty much easy enough. Just one thing is, as I said a little bit earlier, do not rely on your armor. If you need to try and do stuff to carry your team, only try and expose the front of your turret. It is the most armored thing, does bounce things fairly randomly, but it is not reliable. Range and camo is going to be your friend if your teammates aren't being that helpful. Camo's not great, but with the good positioning you can put that rate of fire to work. I really like the VT5, it's a really solid vehicle. It's not ridiculously overpowered, in fact honestly I would say it's probably not quite as good as the Thunderbolt 2 in my opinion. At the very most it is a side grade to it. It is a good little earner though with it being a tier 9 premium vehicle and I mean, the, the game in this footage netted me nearly 350,000 credits in one game. It is really good, really fun to play. Those players that managed to get hold of this really got hold of a very solid vehicle. Plus let's be honest, it's pretty badass looking and in my books looks go a really long way. So I hope you enjoyed my look at the VT5 tier 9 premium light tank. I'm going to leave the rest of the footage playing so you can see how this game plays out. Feel free to check out the other vehicles in my Armored Warfare playlist, but for now, many thanks for watching, and I shall see you in the next video.
Identify. Ah, oh, thanks. 